Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Mental Health Mini. Um, I am absolutely delighted to welcome uh, Stuart Weber. Stuart, thank you for joining us. Pleasure, David. No, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Um, obviously, man that needs no introduction <laughs> involved with the day-to-day -day running of the club. Um, I, The reason I wanted to invite Stuart on here is obviously uh, during uh, one of his announcements, he said uh, he had something that taken a toll on his mental health. And the whole point of these is to allow people to understand that everyone can go through these sorts of things. So uh, we uh, asked Stuart if he'd uh, consent to being interviewed and very gratefully accepted it. So um, sure, as I say to everyone, uh, first question is, what are your experiences with mental health, yourself or other people that you've been with? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to share some stuff here. Um, I think they vary. I think they vary from both my personal experiences and, you know, in the position and job I've done over a number of years now, not just at this club, but other clubs is obviously you work with a lot of people and, you know, the more people you work with, the more people that you realise are, um, are challenged by mental health. I don't always like the word suffering, but I think in terms of challenged by, um, by mental health issues and, and what can trigger this to happen and, you know, and how you sort of can try and help people through it and, and how, how you help, help yourself through it. But I think probably my, if I talk about my personal experience, um, I think it's, it's, it's sort of tough when you go to, to this place that in your own head that, you know, only you sort of know about at that time, you know, before you talk and, and get the help that, you know, I'm sure we'll come on to talk about later, but in terms of being in a place where you're a little bit lost, um you feel the feeling i remember from the times i've you know had some challenges with this has been uh that sense of sort of loneliness um and that that sense of being alone but not in a positive way alone because i actually quite enjoy being alone but in terms of that you know you're sort of struggling to see a sort of way out um and you often spend your life act, acting or playing up to something that maybe you're not um because maybe there's an expectation of you of that whether that's your family whether that's your peer group whether that's the people you work with uh whether that's you know in my case sometimes a public perception is you know you're almost people expect you to be something and i think often you end up um you know becoming experts at p putting a mask on um and becoming the person that people maybe expect you to be whereas maybe there's a little bit of um you know there's a little bit of uncertainty going on or sometimes a lot of uncertainty going on within your own head um and I think that's tough. And I think I, I think a lot of people will go through this to, to some extreme within their lives um, because, you know, it can be triggered from something bad happening, you know, a death, um, you know, a comment, whatever. You know, I'm sure there's a million things which can trigger these stuff. And I'm sure people will, you know, will, will be challenged by them in their own different sort of ways. But, um, yeah, for me, it was probably that that sense of being really alone and, you know, feeling like I can't find a way out of this, actually. Um, and I don't know where to to turn. And for me, it was probably only, I only found them answers when I, I when I got to the breaking point, you know, which is, is unfortunately for some people, um, as we know, it, it can be too late, right? Um, and, you know, and horrific things happen. I, I was fortunate that, you know, I plucked up the courage for want of a better word, to to really open up to somebody um and thank god i did and you know i'll be forever grateful to him for the rest of my life because you know for sure he stopped me going too far down the road that i was going down um and it woke me up to my own feelings and emotions at that point of view and it you know it then allowed me to speak more to people um and get more advice and more help um and then what i've learned over the time is to to identify myself better of when I can feel these moments are coming. Cause, cause I don't think it's something that will ever completely go. You know, I think um, it'll always be something for me that I can feel it building towards. And I know then, okay, what I've got better at over the years is learning it. Okay. I need to interject here. Um, and I need to talk now to somebody or I need to eat better this week or I need to exercise more, whatever it is for, for, for each individual. But, I've become a lot better at seeing the signs 
of that. Um, and I think, you know, people around me specifically, my wife, um, who knows about this is, you know, she can see the sign better now to suggest, yes. are you sure you're in the right place for this? You know, maybe do you need to have a day off or do you need to do something? And um, so that, that, you know, that that's helped. Yeah, a uh, couple of things I, I want to bring up of, of what you said there um, were the um, sort of, uh, sorry, I apologize, my doorbell's just gone. Um, <laughs> you mentioned about having some having someone to talk to in that first step about opening up and um it was uh something that i've discovered after talking to a number of people um so we've obviously spoken to uh, ed balls on this uh we've spoken to chris gore and rob butler chris reeve and they've all said having that first person to talk to has then enabled them to talk to more and more and, and understand the feelings and the other thing I wanted to mention um, that you brought up, and I I know this from my personal experience, is having someone to someone else that can keep an eye on you. So Chris always, uh, Chris Reeve always spoke about Jack Reeve. I've got my wife and my best friend, and like you say with your wife, they can spot the signs sometimes before you can. Yeah. Um, and in terms of your experiences with them, it's a bit scary because one of the we have uh, big pressures in our lives. Um, obviously you help run a, a very very large organization a very everything's very on top of you but also it's not just that we we have ev like every day you wake up in the morning and you have things to deal with in your own life that are nothing to do with jobs nothing and just family and friends pressures and everything can sit you down I mean what how do you handle on a day-to-day -day basis the things that cause you to have these challenges how do you spot them how do you deal with them when they arise well, one of the things I've done is I've taken, I've, I've sort of gone down the route of um, a bit like when you're on an airplane and they say put, fit your own oxygen mask first. I've sort of become a lot better at looking after myself and, and realizing that I need to exercise, um, ideally early in the morning because that's that's you know so I can get myself almost. I say to myself, can I get ahead in that day already? So can I start, by the time the day starts, let's say at eight o'clock, it's like, all right, I'm already an hour and a half ahead here because I've been to the gym or I've been to a run or, or I've done whatever, um, or I've read something from a book, you know, something which sort of helps put me into a positive place because I know I always feel better after exercise. Um, I know I feel better if I eat well. Um, and so it's a bit like, right, I try and deal with them Try and put myself so I'm like, okay, I'm in a good place today. Now I can try and deal what comes. I think also I've learned that um, if there's a problem, I have to deal with it immediately. So it doesn't sit in my head. You know, some, one of the things I've learned, I used to put things off, such as difficult conversations. And like I say, in any walk of life, I'm not talking work here yeah. necessarily, but you know, even you know, with your child or your wife or your mom or whatever, your friends, it's like, actually this is on my mind i need to get out of my mind quickly because it's it's a way rather than letting it fester 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 because for me it would just go on and on and on in my head and by the end of it it become a massive problem in my own head where despite it starting off as a really small, small problem so so i i've learned that right if something's on my mind i need to say it and, and sometimes i can be accused of by even people close to me of being a bit too blunt um but often that's why because it's like well i need to get this out now um, and sometimes, you know, I've got to get better of having a bit more understanding that maybe that's not the right for the person that I'm having that with. Um, but my own sort of well-being, if you like, it's like I need to deal with this today. I can't wait until tomorrow because, you know, that 18 hours of it being in my head is a bit scary. Um, so it's like, let me get it out of my head and I can move on to on to the next thing. Um, so I think that's how I've learned to get better with it over time is looking after myself in the appropriate manner first and foremost um and secondly that and then probably thirdly being open to talk so you know i am um, it's why i do things like this it, it's why i i want it out there i i want because sometimes it, it's not necessarily a cry for help but it's a it's a plead for talk to me if you see something like i'd rather you talk to me than than 
than than not. Um, so that's why I don't mind talking about it, and and I enjoy talking about it, and I feel better when I've talked about it, and it, it brings me into a place where I feel I'll feel better after this Zoom call for sure because it's like oh I've had a chance to talk about a few bits which maybe have been bubbling, maybe I haven't spoken about them for a little while, and and it's a chance to just sort of almost check myself a little bit. It, it's uh, I don't know if this is the right, but it's a plea for understanding as well to know that so that you can sort of explain to people even if they can't help they know something's up and you can yeah. like they not handle with kid gloves necessarily but at least know that there's something else going on yeah. and if you're a bit short with someone you can apologize later but they also understand that there's something else going on at that time yeah um, I, I suppose like i want i wanted to make a point of talking to yourself doing this because Lots of people will look at this and say you're in a high pressure job because there's a lot of people's happiness riding on the club and things like that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the greatest issue that you face. There's lots of stuff. Um, I know that I, I I like my job very much. I find it very relaxing. It's other things that I find stressful, day to day stuff. If you had to pick one piece of advice for someone else if there's someone going through this or they know someone going through this, what would you say? What would you, what would be your one piece of advice that you think would help you to help them? For me, it's, you've got to talk. You have to find someone to talk to and you'll, it's super scary or I found it scary to talk about it. And then almost once I did, it's almost like I've not stopped talking about it because it's like, the release and the understanding from people because i think i think the majority of the world um respects it because i think the majority of the world suffer by it at some point it's a bit like if you talk about cancer i doubt you'll meet anyone in the world unless they're a complete horrible individual who will not show an element of care if someone said to him oh, i've got cancer or a family member because at some point we're all going to get affected by that the statistics tell us right yes and i think the same for this I think it's the same for this. And I think it's the uh, the more you talk, the more people either can see themselves in you. So we're like, actually, that's good because I thought it was just me feeling like this. But actually, my mates just spoke through Christ. I was feeling that. Uh, and I had that. My, my most difficult time wasn't, has, has never been work-related, um, was actually being the first year of my, um, of my son being in the world because... Work was full on. I hadn't prepared to be a dad. I had no idea what was coming. I've never been interested in kids or babies, let's say. So it's like that first baby I ever held was my son. Um, and suddenly you've got this world where you're sleep deprived, your wife's emotion, hormones all over the place, rightly. You've got this thing in your hands which you're responsible for, but you can't communicate with. You've got no idea what it wants. It's crying. And then coupled with work, everything else in life, the you know it was that's what broke me were was was that um not you know with a great respect losing a football game or you know selling a player or buying a player yeah you know i think i've got the skills to deal with that and can't you know put that in a box of, no, that's my work life and it's a massive part of my life um as most people's jobs are but it's also like but yeah at the end of the day i go home it's it's, it's a job and you know someone else will do the job when I leave and someone else will do the job after they leave. You know, the most important thing in my job is that the club exists and continues to grow. But in terms of me as an individual, it's like, well, no, that's not going to, you know, bring me down, so so to speak. But that first year, but like I say, talking. Um, and then I think you find when, or this is my experience anyway, when you do talk, both when people have spoke to me about it and when I've spoken about it is naturally people will then check in with you. So the individual that, you know, helped me will check in with me once a week since whenever this happened six years ago so there will not be a week go by without that and likewise people who have come to me it will be a very similar thing and when i say check in it's a quick whatsapp how are you mate all good um you know it, it's not you know a 30 minute therapy session far from it it's not that it's about just somebody sort of checking in and i think but you've got to pluck the courage up to speak and i think as well you, you know, it hurt me when I opened up about this was when, you know, a comment from a family member said, well, did you not think what you'd leave behind and, and what devastation that would cause? And it, it's, 
I think for that as well. I remember my mum said something to me, unrelated to this actually, but when I um, first passed my driving license, she says, "Oh, can you just do me one favour?" I said, "Yeah, what?" She goes, "When you're driving your car like an idiot, just think about me." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, and I'm so glad he said that to me because you know, I, I, you know, like everyone, I think, especially young lads, you do drive sometimes a bit too quick when you're younger, but and you're exploring limits. And, and I'm not saying I became a perfect driver because of that comment, but that comma, comment I passed my driving test 22 years ago still sits in my head." pretty much every time we get in the car and it's like and you know thank god she did but 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 you do you think actually yeah there's a massive repercussion here if i wrap this car around a tree to not only me because i might be dead and who knows what happens after that we don't know right um but actually what is left behind is complete devastation um and you know probably very unnecessary devastation at that point um and i think um yeah i think you have to think like that, you know, it's, um, you know, and I don't think anything's ever that bad. You know, I think, you know, that that's, you think it is. And we build it up in our little heads, you know, we've got this muscle in our head called the brain and we build stories up, story, 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 story. And it's such a powerful thing. And yeah, we just got to get help. And, and, you know, there's so much resource out there now, um, you know, because I appreciate it as well. Not everyone's, wants to come out and talk on a zoom or whatever, or they, you know, they want to talk and, and it's a difficult step. And I think if you've had to make that step as you've had to do, as I've had to do, you understand, no, it is a really difficult step. So it, it's easy to say, Oh, just talk. You know, I didn't think that then years ago, I didn't think it was easy to, if I'd known I would have done it earlier. Um, but it wasn't, it was a daunting step at that point. It was a lot. It was a last cry of help step for me personally. So I respect that, People say, but have a look then online and books and try and, you know, if the first instance is in the oh, okay, I'm going to speak, well, maybe you could try and, you know, help get some answers and some signs in a different way rather than just, um, you know, doing the worst thing. I think two, two things to pick up on that. So number one, um, you said that you, you told the wonderful story about your mum and the driving uh, and I think there's an element of that in this because I remember with my own struggles telling my friends that I was going through this and the the hurt on their face will live with me forever and will will stop me going anywhere near that. I mean, I still have my, my issues. I still work through them. I still speak to people when I need to. But I I doubt I will ever get to that point because their reactions will just stop me because yeah. I remember the pain on their faces and I can't I can't do that um the other thing that you mentioned um was about the resources and one of the things that I'm glad you said is how things have changed so when I had my struggles and I, even to be honest you say yours started about six years ago the difference between what existed and what was spoken about then versus now and all the organizations and not just the fact there are more organizations they're better equipped yeah to deal with this thing they've got more you there is whether you want to talk to a friend a family member or someone anonymous there is always that person that will be able to listen to you and guide you through the next steps just to get you to that next bit to that next bit and that's all it requires you just need to get to the next day and the next day and eventually you'll keep going yeah, so, and that was one thing I'm really glad you mentioned. Um, my thing with Easter, I always want them to be a bit short because I want people to kind of focus on what's being said. Yeah. So, um, you've answered my three questions wonderfully. I'm very, very grateful for you taking the time. Is there anything else you want to add for anyone that's watching or listening? No, I mean, again, thanks for having me on, and and you know, yeah, I think all I'd say is there's help, um, and I please get it and. You know, you know, we're obviously talking from being, you know, um, brought together by f the football, I think. And I think, it, you know, talking on behalf of Norwich City as well is if this is a Norwich fan, there's help within your football club. You know, with the Community Sports Foundation, there's there's so many experts at work for us who can help. So, you know, if it's you suffering or if it's somebody that you know suffering, but maybe that one common thing is the love of football. It's like, well, let football help because football can. Um, so, yeah, I think just just ask, you know, and you can be, you know, uh, what's the word when your name's not given out? Um, you know, you can do it. 
quietly where people don't know who you are and, and stuff like that. But you know, anonymously, we, anonymously, that's the word. And um, you know, we we can help. So um, you know, let let us help. You know, and and you know, if it's that football, especially, I think probably wrongly, but I always think more of young men in these situations, probably because I, I, I'm a man and been a young man, um, is I think the one one of the things which just, you know, glue, glue us all together is a love of sport and a love of football normally. So it's like, well, if you've got, a, you know, a son, a nephew, a cousin or whatever, and daughter, of course, but in terms of, you know, I'm talking from my own experiences, like football might be the way that you can get to these people. And it's like, oh, you do realise that there's help actually within Norwich and it can be a bit more cool and, you know, listen to this. This is one of the players talking about how he was suffering or how his childhood wasn't great or whatever. And it's like, so, you know, you might be like my mum was no interest in football, but she would try and connect with me via football. So because she knew that's what I love. So it's like, you know, if this is a mum listening to this or an auntie or a dad who doesn't like football, but goes, oh, Christ, all my son talks about is he plays FIFA all day. Well, maybe try and use uh, the power of football to, to for some good because it can, you know, it, it's just, ultimately football is a small community, really. You know, you can be anywhere in the world, and if you like football, you'll you'll be able to spark a conversation nine times out of ten. So it's like, you know, use it, use it to help. An absolutely wonderful message to end on. So um, once again, Stuart, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for opening up and and talking mm-hmm. about it. And just hopefully, even if it's just one person, it will help someone. So yeah, thank you ever so much for doing this. Anytime, David. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate.